What's on your radar, Ryan? So there's going to be a ton of attention on critical race theory's role in this Virginia election. And to me, it most likely played a role largely as base mobilization for Republicans. We'll have plenty of time to talk about that in future segments and future radars and probably Robbie's <laughs> future radar. But I wanted to focus on an education issue that largely escaped much coverage on the campaign trail, but that I suspect played a significant role in the election. And that's how public schools handled COVID. So Fairfax County in particular took one of the most aggressive approaches, shutting down in March 2020 and more or less staying closed entirely for the next year. Anybody who questioned that all or nothing approach was accused of wanting people to die. As profoundly difficult as it was for many parents and their kids, it was also symptomatic of the broader cultural divide over how to approach COVID, with Democratic leaders pushing toward extreme caution and Republicans pushing toward pretending COVID didn't exist or was just like the flu. Northern Virginia and the place where I live, D.C., took similar approaches, and we found it so infuriating that we picked up and we moved, spending the last year in Vermont, where schools were in person, never really missing a beat. I was lucky in that I could work from anywhere and still do my job, but most people couldn't swing that for one reason or another, so they needed another outlet for their frustration. For a very long time, voters have favored Democrats when it comes to education. And I do think CRT is an issue worth talking about, but the way Democrats handled school closures during COVID was likely also a factor for some significant portion of the voters who said education was their top issue. And those voters went 55-44 for Yunkin. Now, these are exit polls, so you, know, you take them with a bit of a grain of salt, but they are often useful for understanding the direction that things are going. Notice that only 14% said coronavirus was their top issue, and they went Democratic by an 83-17 margin. So drilling down to white women, and particularly white women without a college degree, the bottom fell out for McAuliffe. Trump won 56% of white women without a college degree, and Youngkin won 75%. Democrats have to figure out how one out of every five of those women switched from Biden to Yunkin over the past year and fix it, or there'll be a permanent minority party. White women without a college degree, of course, are much less likely than highly educated men or women to be able to work remotely from home and generally don't have the means to send their kids to private school. There's every reason to think they were furious about how the public schools handled COVID. Pre-election polls showed that parents with kids in K-12 through schools favored Yunkin by 15 points. Another proxy for how people feel about the government's approach to COVID is support for mandates. As we've seen more or less everywhere, mandates are popular, in this case by a 55 to 42 margin. But that's a fairly small margin. And notice that those who support mandates went for McAuliffe by less than those who oppose them went for Yunkin. The opponents were more fired up than the supporters, which makes intuitive sense. What's interesting is that voters by a 12-point margin said that the economy was doing well, which usually bodes well for the party in power. The Biden administration has believed from the earliest days, probably rightly, that its success would hinge on its ability to handle the pandemic, and that pushed them toward mandating vaccines, which has produced the backlash and sick outs that we've seen. In the exit polls, Biden was underwater by nine points, and those who approved of Biden's job generally voted for McAuliffe, and those who disapproved voted for Yunkin. You saw the same thing in New Jersey. McAuliffe's problems were not just rural or suburban or urban, but all over the state, meaning the explanation for his loss has to be something that touched everywhere. Now, 28% of people said that they cast their vote for Yunkin as a way to oppose Biden, while just 20% said they voted for McAuliffe to support Biden. Given the tight margin, that right there made the difference. People were more fired up to oppose Biden than his supporters were fired up to go out and have his back. In fact, among those who said Biden wasn't a factor in their vote, McAuliffe actually won by six. The mandates have so far been quite effective at increasing vaccination rates. With Delta coming down and emergency rooms clearing up space, there could be room for Democrats to ease off and move back towards carrots rather than sticks. With Pfizer getting approval for its vaccine for kids, extending the mandates there could backfire badly. 
At a fundraiser last night, according to GOP lobbyist Sam Gadaldig, Kevin McCarthy and Jim Jordan were giddy about the prospect of taking the House next year, with McCarthy showing off a model that projected a 50-seat pickup if the Virginia numbers hold steady. There was, of course, a different approach that could have been tried by Democrats if they had passed their reconciliation bill by the summer and spent the campaign talking about everything in it, they'd have had something to actually run on. It's a crazy idea, but maybe they might want to try it sometime. And so uh, I know we're going to talk more about this the rest of the show, but I don't know, what, what, what's, what's your take on the role that education played in, and the various different strains of it? thought about education. No, I, I completely agree with you. It's, it, I think it's very important, especially, you know, you speak to a, a generally progressive audience. I think it's very important for progressives to understand how frustrated parents were with schools. And many of them do understand that. Many of them are parents and, mm -hmm. and have experienced that. The, but look, you know, McAuliffe had Randy Weingarten stumping for him at mm -hmm. the end. This is how he ends his campaign with a celebration of this figure who is a, a very divisive figure who is the avatar of, of the teachers, of teachers, public teachers unions really keeping schools closed down. Maybe you think that's a good idea. A lot of people don't. A lot of people thought that was miserable, that, that schools were not an essential service. And so everything else, you had to make it work. You had to figure out how to do it. And schools just said, nope, now it's on you, the parents. And then, right. and then they said, and, and there was contempt almost for then for the idea that parents would want to be involved in the education when you said for a year, it's up to you, sorry. Right. And it, a, lot of, a lot of people are going to, going to want to not talk about this sort of thing, and, mm -hmm. and and I can understand and say, look, you know, public health decisions shouldn't be made with you know a politic with yeah with elections in mind. Okay, that's fine, but it's it's still something worth knowing. Like you you shouldn't advocate ignorance. Like if 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 there is some influence here, it's worth studying. A lot of people are going to say, well, no, 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 stop it. This is all just racism. But Virginia's not more racist today than it was one year ago. It's not yeah. more racist today when than it was. When it voted for Barack Obama. Right. Or, it just elected or, a black lieutenant governor. <laughs> or Biden, or, uh, you know, for, or four years ago. No, right. Vir Virginia, Virginia's history of, with racism is extraordinarily fraught, d deeply. Uh, but, the, but the idea that all of a sudden um, th that racism you know, flared up and is the sole cause of this doesn't make sense. Tr if, if that was true, Trump running on the caravan should have easily right. easily swept him to right. victory. It didn't. So what so what is going on here? T you know, at, talk to people. Talk to people who had kids in, in public schools. I, anecdotally, you're seeing on, online, and you saw leading up to it, a number of people saying that they know a lot of people that, that were switching from Biden to Youngkin right. because they were angry, not about CRT, and we'll talk about that later, right. but they're angry about the way that the public schools um, handled Handled the situation. Their, their, were, their top issues are the economy and education. And if, if you had, if McAuliffe wins, what does that mean? That means schools might close. Uh, it would be much more likely to close if, you know, some CD CDC, very risk, CD, right. risk averse CDC officials said so. Businesses might be required to do something. You know, we don't, we can't predict the pandemic. Uh, but the, the businesses are more likely to close. Schools are more likely to close with the Democrat in charge. And I think that spooked a lot of people. Right. I'm, I don't live in Virginia, that would, I'm not, and I'm not a Republican partisan. I don't have a lot of affection for the Republican Party at this stage. But that would have spooked me if I was right. a parent, if I was a small business owner. Right. And if you go from losing 56% of the vote among white women without a college degree to 75%, that's not a sustainable national party. Like you got, You've got to figure something out yeah. there. There's no way. Anyway, looking forward to your radar next.